Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us, sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So, sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. It's interesting. You know what else you won't see Monique doing? You won't ever see a, her with her family, videos with her children or grandchildren. Because nobody fucks with me. How do you have sweet babies when your own babies don't fuck with you? How do, how do you love us for real when there's no evidence of anybody loving you for real? Except your daddy, who you apparently have to pay. And FYI, daughters are paid for by daddies. Not daddies who get paid by their daughters. Hey, tea sippers Hope you guys are doing good. Woo! I'm sorry. I had to start with that DL intro. Whoo! DL done brought out some truth. You know, folks try to dismiss it, but he wasn't telling no lies. How do you talk about your sweet babies and you're having issues with your own babies? And again, parenting is not an easy job. It is not for the weak. None of us, you know, know all the answers. It does not come with a handbook. But today it went down on social media, honey, okay? Once again, Club Shay Shay is the gift that what? Keeps on damn giving. So what's going on now is that Monique's oldest son, Shalon Jackson, which a lot of people didn't even know he existed, because mainly people always see Monique, well, when they see Monique with her kids, it's usually always the twins that she has with Sydney. Um, there's also a third child. I don't know if that's Sydney's son, if that's both of their, their kids together. I'm not really sure. But um, anyhow, Shalon came out and he basically wanted to say his piece about his mother, their relationship, because remember, she brought it up on Club Shay Shay. So y'all go ahead and check this out real quick. You said your first son. Yes. That you're trying to get it. But it robbed you of a lot of things of a mother-son relationship. It did. And so you made sure not to make the mistake this time around. What's your relationship like? Is he re resentful of that? We're still very much separated. Okay. And 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 it's a it's a it's a um. It's one of those things where you have to pray to the universe and say, "Let time do the healing." Mm -hmm. And that's it. Right. That's it. Let time do that healing. It may heal it in time, and it may not. Right. And that's something that we as parents have to say. Listen. Right. I've done what I've could do. I've taken accountability for it. Now it's up to you. Right. That's like when somebody's saying, Shannon, I want to apologize to you. Now it's up to you. Whether or not to accept it. Whether or not to. But once I give it to you, I've done my part. And don't apologize like no punk. I'm just sorry for everything. Uh-uh. 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 That gets your of it. No, break it down. Let's go bit by bit so right. that way we know you understand <laughs> The offense that you've done. Right. Now, I'm not saying because I've had to do that. All right. So you guys just heard what Monique said on Club Shay Shay. So Shalon wanted to address everything today, and he did. He dropped about a 10-minute video. So we're going to go ahead and watch what Shalon had to say about Monique. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Hi. <laughs> I am Shalon. I am a stand-up comedian, Monique's oldest son. Um, I guess I felt the need to make this video to just provide some context into this false narrative about her praying to the universe in order to reconcile our relationship or whatever the hell it is. Um, I wrote it all down so that way I don't go all over the place and get emotional or anything like that. I can, so I'm going to talk like I'm reading a script, but it's just going to help me kind of stay together. Um, but uh, to address the uh, Club Shay Shay interview that she did where she states that she prays to the universe in regards to reconciling our relationship, as I stated, um, is odd. Uh, my mother and I both know that that is a very false narrative, and I would like to free her of having to continue telling that lie. Faith without work is dead, and neither one of us cares to put forth any effort to reconcile with the other. Uh, we are separate, as she put it, because she doesn't care to be my mother any more than I care to be her son. Neither one of us uh, has had the desire to reach out to the other in a very long time, and I don't think that either of us anticipates that 
feeling ever returning. Speaking with my mother directly in my experience will either lead to some odd newfound moment of clarity in regards to how she was as my mother, or she retreats back to daddy to move forward with a conversation. And I'm tired of hearing my mother's truths. Um, newsflash, I'm not sure if people know, but sting it, standing in your truth doesn't make you noble. Um, I'm not sure if people are aware of that. Uh, but responding this way, I feel as though it allows me to say my piece uninterrupted um, to those wondering, well, why say something now? Mm, call it a form of therapy for me, I suppose. Um, but when her daddy had intentionally state, stated that they have three sons, but his wife is on the internet talking about the fourth son in a video that has millions of views that rubbed me the wrong way. Um, but anyway, to inform a child that you are not interested in being a mother at a time when that kid is the only kid that has the potential to lead a child to believe that you are not interested in them specifically. Uh, but to take it a step further, <clears throat> you also admit, my mother had also admitted to me that she didn't do the best job that she could do, um, which would also make one begin to question, you know, all of your past decisions and prior emotional interactions. But to be completely honest and fair, um, you know, those were things that I was willing to get over. You know, nobody's perfect. We're all human. But my mother showed a clear lack of humility, compassion, and consideration when taking any level of accountability for those things. Um, my mother does a fantastic job of acknowledging a lot of things, but she doesn't take accountability very well. And anything that she may take true accountability for, it's only at her convenience, uh, in my experience. Um, but if I had to guess, though... Her interest in being a mother probably started around the time that she married her daddy and had his children. Um, but that interest, you know, obviously seemed one-sided and as it should have been. Um, by that time, I'm in my late teens. So to some degree, the, <coughs> excuse me, the neglect becomes easier to hide or validate, I guess you could say. There are now two baby boys in the house, you know, that require attention. Um, but still during that time, however, I still watched her enjoy the love and admiration of total strangers more than my own. Uh, to this very day, my mother has never expressed to me when, if ever, um, she became interested in me as her son. That did lead me down a path of questioning my self-worth and struggling to understand the value of a mother in a child's life. In the interview, she also states that she gave me an apology but an apology to a son from a mother that consciously showed no interest in him holds no weight. Um, there are still women to this day uh, that my mother will give credit to for being more of a mother to me than she ever could. Her assistant, my cousin, being one of them. Um, every time, though, that my mother would stay that she was right here whenever I was ready. Um, that ideology still blows my mind today that a person could openly admit to being an uninterested, not put my best foot forward type of parent and be so self-centered that they still express to the kid, you have to come to me when you're ready. You got to come to me for us to make this right. <laughs> okay. Um, but I, I'm not sure what my mother could possibly think that she has shown me in the past or have for me now that's not money, goodness gracious, that would make me want to come to her or or whatever that whatever those feelings are supposed to be. Um, a mother is supposed to be the first woman that a boy falls in love with. Uh, I loved my mother very much, uh, but my mother loved things more than she loved me, and she would validate her love for me by giving me things and would proceed to call me ungrateful or inconsiderate if said things did not have the desired effect. Um, I couldn't imagine what it's like to be her, though, uh, to ask God for what you want. And then he gives you what you need, though, only for you to ignore it and have the audacity to ask God for something else. And um, I'm glad I don't <laughs> I'm glad I didn't do that. 
Um, and when he told you no, uh, you went to the universe instead. Um, by no means, though, do I want to give off any type of an impression that I am a victim of, of anything. Um, I, that is not the case. As you can see, I'm smiling from ear to ear. Um, I'm alive. I'm happy. I'm a dad. Um, I'm healthy, I think. <laughs> I drink a lot of water. I'm getting over a cold now. Um, you know, I still have my days just like everybody else. And, you know, there were a few things that she did teach me along the way. Uh, I did learn how not to love from my mother. Um, I also learned to make sure that I never lose so much of who I am that I have to validate it through another person. Um, and though I feel as though, you know, in hindsight, you know, I think she did it reluctantly. I do appreciate my mother, you know, for showing me what the top of the mountain looks like. You know what I'm saying? It did give me perspective on what hard work and dedication can get you. But I don't want something like that at the cost of giving up something that I created. I'm not, I don't want it, I don't want it that bad. And speaking of creations, I genuinely, truly, I really did want my mother to have a relationship with my daughter. Um, I even fought through those intrusive thoughts that were, if she wasn't interested in you, what makes you think she's going to be interested in your kid? Um, but it took my mother no time at all to prove that those intrusive thoughts were correct. Um, but what I can say, good for her, the universe did, uh, you know, bless her with three other sons, bless her with three other sons and God willing. Um, you know, I'm sure that one of them, all three of them are adults now. So I'm sure that all, you know, one of them, God willing, if not all three of them will make her the grandmother that she wants to be. Um, I'm, I look for, I still look forward, you know, to that moment for her. Um, but overall, when it comes to the boys though, uh, I am happy that whenever they do hear me talk, or, sorry, my phone did something weird, but no, but whenever they hear me talk, um, they don't know what it is. They can't, they can't relate to what it is that I'm saying. My experience with my mother is not their experience, um, with our mother. Uh, so my prayer for her and them is that they continue to see her the way that they see her now. Um, I do also want to make sure that I say thank you to my mother for giving me life. Without that moment in time, I wouldn't have had my little one. But outside of that moment, there isn't anything that either of us that either of us has to offer the other. Um, in my opinion, it's a waste of God's time and the universe's time for praying for something that you were not willing to put forth any effort to obtain. Uh, putting the work into becoming Monique is more important to my mother than being my mother. And I do not believe that it was it was never about her being there and waiting for me but it was supposed to be about me being there and waiting for her um my mother's value had reached such a low point in my life that i no longer found it necessary to either want to wait for her or even go to her um but like i said man i'm super grateful that she has the opportunity to do it all over again you know i'm happy for her. i hope the cat williams tour goes well but you know, the narrative that she prays for us to reconcile is a false narrative. It's not real. And I'd appreciate it if she stopped saying stuff like that. All right. So y'all just heard what Shalon had to say. The boy is clearly hurting. He's going through a lot. So as of 30 minutes ago, I waited to do the video because I was like, I know Monique and Daddy, they're going to be here soon, okay? I know they're going to have something to say. And they have responded back to Shalon. And I want you guys to hear what Monique has to say and Sydney has to say, um, you know, to her son. Y'all go ahead and check this out. There was a Instagram that was put up, or I guess. It was TikTok, baby. TikTok that was put up by. My son. My oldest son, Shalom. And this is what I want to say to this. There are some people that are saying, oh, you should be ashamed of your mothering skills. You should be ashamed of yourself. This is what I'll say. Let's let it play out. Because the same ones that said to me, I was crazy. I was deranged. We watched it play out. So just like with my son, we'll watch this play out. And I do want to address this, though, Shalon. When you say her daddy, her daddy, then that's when mommy going to say stop playing because, you know, this has been Uncle Sid your whole life. Uncle Sid knew you before you knew you. So for you to say her three sons, 
Yes, you're absolutely right. He has three sons. He can't claim you as his son because he's always been Uncle Sid and he knows your daddy very well. And love that brother. And the irony of all of this is not what is said, but what's left off. Yes. See, you're, you're leaving off the fact that the last time we laid eyes on you, your mother got you everything you needed for the newborn baby about three years ago. You're forgetting about how I from Georgia am talking you through getting your car after we gave you the half of the down payment for it. And you were 31 years of age, 32 years of age at that point. And I'm negotiating the deal with the dealer for you as you sit there. And you have the vehicle you're driving right now because of your mother. These are the things that you're leaving out when you are expressing what you're expressing in reference to your mother. You're not expressing the relationship that you have with your father where you spoke ill to him, not to mention spoke ill to your mother, but somehow your mother and father and I all have a loving relationship and communicate back and forth because of the love that we have for you. The one thing these individuals and to the individuals out here that oftentimes speak after they've heard one side of the story, there's an old saying, believe half of what you see and none of what it is that you hear. Please don't take our word for it. But what we will convey is this. Those who are parents and have raised their parents up to being adults. The children. Raise their children up to being adults. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> Those who are parents that raise their children into adulthood know that there comes a time and a place in which they determine their own decisions, their own path. You can have multiple children that multiple children that are raised in one house but they act and they take on different things. All right. So you guys just heard what Monique had to say. And um, both videos are powerful. Um, I'm really sad for her, you know, that she's going through it with her son. Again, it is not easy being a parent. And nobody can sit here and act like they've never had any type of issue or frictions with their kids. It's not easy. But he made a lot of good points. He said faith without work is dead. It is. You know, you have to put in the work. You have to be the change that you want to see. And if, you know, if you're just apologizing and saying, well, you know, it is what it is. You know, if he decides to come through, great. If not, oh, well, it's not going to mend itself. Instead of her standing next to daddy and letting, you know, Sydney, a.k.a. daddy or, you know, dad, uncle, whatever he wants to be addressed as, speak. Monique, you need to pick up the phone and, and talk to your son. He is hurting. Material, items, cars, all of that. I get it. Gen Z is a very entitled generation. Trust me. But at the end of the day, that boy is crying out for love. He just wants his mom. You know, all of those times that she took chasing her career, he was left with the cousin. He was left with everybody but his mom. And I get Monique. You know, this is not to knock her. This is for anybody who's chasing a dream. So many times we try to shame people because they go to go chase their dreams in Hollywood or social media and things like that. But it's no different than a mother going to school, working 24-7, going to college and, you know, trying to make sure she passes her test to be a nurse. It's so hard to balance being a mother and a worker. And a lot of us end up being single parents. So we don't even have the backing of a husband, of a, of a boyfriend to help us. So it is very hard as a mother, as a single mother. And a lot of times with your oldest, your oldest, unfortunately, gets the short end of the stick. It's just it is what it is. Um, I was oldest by default. And you do. Because you're a lot of times you're the caretaker of the house. You're the one cleaning the house when mom and dad aren't there. You're the, you know, built in babysitter. You know, you'll have moms who will keep having babies and babies and babies, not thinking, well, who's about to watch these babies every time I go to work? It's the oldest. 
That's why you have a lot of kids who are the oldest. They really feel away towards their siblings and towards their situations, you know, because we as parents have put them in, you know, positions to where they had to be the father and the mother while we worked and paid the bills. But with that being said, Monique is also, from what I've seen, it seemed like she's taken responsibility, at least publicly. She's always been honest about it and said, you know, she wasn't the best mother. She was chasing Hollywood. She said she's apologized. But he also said in the video that he doesn't want to accept her apology. So he needs to decide as, as an adult, what will it take for his mother to make it right with him? Because I think sometimes kids, they just want the acknowledgement. They just want you to acknowledge that they're hurt, that they've been through things, that they were placed in certain positions that they should not have been placed in. And sometimes as parents, we don't want to hear it because we're parents. You know, I'm the adult. It, it is what it is. Toughen up and move forward. But with this generation, they're built differently. They're not Gen X. Gen Z is built totally different from Gen X, millennials, and the boomers, okay? They're a more sensitive generation. And their generation, well, they, they will blast you. Gen Z will go online, tell all your business, blast you, go off, cuss you out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We've seen this time and time again. But they have to find some type of middle ground. They have to communicate. And Monique, there's nothing wrong with having a man. I love her and Sydney's relationship. But this is your son that you gave birth to. You can't go around telling my sweet babies to other people's kids that other people gave birth to. But you have this issue here with your son. You have this issue here with your grandchild. And this must be a very known issue in the celebrity world behind the scenes because everything DL said was on point. Your son just reiterated that. You have no relationship with him. That's great that you have a relationship with the younger ones and the ones who are Sydney's kids, but you can't forget about the oldest because he was there from day one. You only get one oldest child and every child only gets one mother and one father. So at some point in time, there has to be peace. Y'all got to figure this out. It's really sad. The young man even said he's struggling to understand the value of a mother in a son's life. He was saying some deep stuff. You know, it's easy to dismiss it and say he's whining, get over it. You're in your 30s. You're a father now. But that man is still hurt. He's still going through some stuff. And I also think that, you know, he didn't get it right for a long time because he wasn't a parent. But now that he's a parent and as his child gets older... You know, the baby's still young now, so it's easy to be around more and, you know, cuddle and all that stuff. But it's a lot harder when you're trying to find your purpose in life and you have to decide between a career and your child and you have to try and find that balance. It is not easy. It's not easy being a parent. Like I've always said, it does not come with the rule book. And it's damn sure not easy being a child because for children, they just want their parents' love and attention. They want to look up from the stands and see you there at the games. They want to look up from their drill team and see you there in the stands watching their competition. They want you to be supportive. Cars are nice. Gifts are nice. Money's nice. But it's that time that you can never get back. And I think for him, you know, I'm sure he was maybe involved in sports and, you know, other curricular activities. Every time he looked up, he didn't see his mom. He'd have to see his mother on TV. Every time he looked up, it was either grandmama, auntie, or somebody else. And um, it is. The whole situation is sad. I, I hope and I pray that they end up figuring this out. But, you know, Monique, you need to talk to your son. You know, doing the internet thing, leave that for Gen Z. Act like a millennial. Act like a boomer. Pick up the phone and call that baby. And really have a conversation with him. You and him, nobody else. You don't need a cheerleading squad. You don't need Sydney in the mix because there's obviously some issues there with him with Sydney because he kept calling Sydney daddy. He does not call him Sydney. And then you said, well, Sydney was your uncle before he was your daddy. Well, that might even be a problem because as a child, how is this Uncle Sydney, Uncle Sydney, my best friend? And now he's moved up to the role of you know, lover and, and stepfather and now the father of my siblings. That might be some things that were sprung up on him as a child that he wasn't able to understand and compute. So maybe you and him have to go back to where the trauma started and really have a conversation about it and really, you know, just do whatever it takes to mend fences. Life is too short. People are dropping dead literally every day, every day with no type of closure, no nothing. 
So while you guys still have each other, y'all need to talk. Fuck the social media, fuck the viral moments, the comedy, you know what I'm saying? Y'all need to get back what you guys once had. And then at that point, if you have tried everything and he has tried everything and you guys still can't come to some type of mutual agreement and some type of understanding and letting it go and, you know, starting the healing process, then at that point you can say you've done everything that you can do. And then, you know, if y'all decide to part ways, y'all decide to part ways. But it seems to me like he's crying out for help and he wants his mom. He wants that relationship. If he didn't, he wouldn't have took it to social media. So with that being said, tea sippers, I leave the conversation up to you guys. This was definitely a pretty heavy video. What do you guys think about this entire situation concerning Monique and her oldest son, Shalon, basically going to the internet with his grievances? How do y'all feel about everything? Um, I can't wait to read y'all's comments down below. Please make sure you guys hit this video with a like. Feel free to share the video. And most importantly, please make sure you're still subscribed to the channel. And I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.